as a brittle, how they came across that house made out of candies, but looking at dresses made out of chocolates, why? I was just amazed and loved to have that for dessert. Look good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so, you know what, uh, right now, in the studio, we have our guests, and it would be Dr. Arasa, and he's going to be talking about Lisa, your surgery, I've never seen of it before. In fact, um, it would always be on. Uh, I, Lisa Surgery, yeah. this is something new for me. Okay. Yeah, Lisa Surgery. Now, before we uh, go get to the doctor, 2282-8578-8579, phone numbers are open, give us a call. Doctor, let's talk about laser ear surgery. Uh, MP3s, I'm holding one of these. Uh, people are plugging things into their ears. Now, is this the cause? Uh, is this what we're talking about when we say laser ear surgery? No, uh, laser ear surgery is, is a tool mm -hmm. that we use in the ear to try and remove disease okay. uh, instead of traditional metal instruments mm -hmm. uh, where there's no movement of the little bones behind the eardrum. Okay. Okay. What about diseases are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about patients with uh, discharging ears, mm -hmm. hearing loss, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes headache, mm -hmm. pain. And uh, when you look into the eardrum, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of debris in there that has to be cleared and it, it's progressed beyond the eardrum. So, uh, I mean, I have a, a couple of props here. Okay, think, yes, uh, we, we notice you've got a couple of props uh, here. This is, this is, a, this is a, a, an artificial bone on the right ear. Okay, okay. and this, the, it's, it's the way up. This is the bottom, yes. Okay, now, and this is camera can just zoom in. Behind the ear here. Okay. So, we're working in a space in here. That's mm -hmm. how small the space is for a few hours. Oh, wow. Under a microscope. Okay. So, the, the instruments have to be really fine. Right. And the advantage of the laser is, um, this is a, a, an example of a, of a piece here. Right. You've got a hand piece and mm -hmm. one tip comes out here. Oh, yeah, that's really yes, tiny. Yes, it's 0.2 millimeters. Wow. So okay. you can do very fine work mm -hmm. and the power is very low. Right. It's enough to destroy the disease but not the bones. Okay. So the idea is to preserve hearing. Mm -hmm. Because traditional surgery, because they don't want to take the patient's health at the risk, they remove a lot of the bones together with the, the disease mm -hmm. so that the patient has a dry ear. So the risk of ear disease is the brain's up here, yeah. and over time there's a possibility of a brain abscess. Right. So uh, using this method it takes longer, but uh, the idea is to try and preserve the hearing and also the structures. We don't make a big cavity. This back wall we preserve this, right. so when the patient's closed up and you look down, we right. have a normal ear canal. Okay. And it's useful for children, for swimming and so forth as well. Whereas traditionally they would take the back wall down to have a big cavity that needs cleaning. It's difficult if you need to fix it here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's whistling because the closure is not appropriate, uh, discomfort for the patient, and so forth. So it's, it's a technique I learned in England. Mm -hmm. uh, it's present in, in France and in, in Western countries, okay. but in Asia it's not really that common. Okay. okay. Now, we've actually taken to the to the public to, um, because I believe that there's some people who actually have questions for you, Doctor. So uh, one question coming in your way. Let's take it away to see who has the first question coming in. To know, is there an age limit to ear surgery? No. Uh, is there an age limit? Really, not really. Um, I, I suspect if someone had a, if someone in their late, late 80s, early 90s, you a bit frail mm -hmm. and you didn't want to put them through surgery because you have to drop the blood pressure for the operation to reduce the bleeding, you would try to control it in the outpatient clinic, okay. cleansing under the microscope. Okay. Um, but there's a small risk that the disease can progress. Okay. But its benefit is weighing up the balance of uh, benefit versus risk. Okay. But otherwise, really no. From from young babies, anyone, anyone. and the same exists for implants for hearing as well. Mm -hmm. If someone is 80 or 90, they mm -hmm. will be uh, refused surgery because hearing is a right for everyone. Of course, of course. No. Now, a couple of other gadgets coming in. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Could you just walk us through? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, this is uh, what's called the cochlear implant. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a there's a metal body here, and then there's an electrode that is uh, inserted into the ear. Mm -hmm. So the implant sort of fixed to the skull, we drill a shell in the pressure here, mm -hmm. and this electrode is threaded into the middle ear, mm -hmm. and further on into the inner ear, mm -hmm. and this takes over the function of the inner ear. So this is where patients have no real inner ear function, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, this is outside on the skin, and this is uh, there's a magnetic interface. Mm -hmm. So 
snaps on like that. Yes, yeah. so the skin is tweaked, and then the patient hears through the microphone. Right. But they don't hear through the ear canal. They hear through the through the device. Oh, I see. So it's a it's a bionic ear radio. So it's basically just uh, these gadgets are for people who have uh, hearing disability. Yes. For this this particular yeah. yeah. person, yes. Yes. So what we plan is when a patient cannot benefit from a traditional hearing aid, okay. then we we suggest a computer. This is so fine. Well, Yes, I guess, I guess. The, 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 the tools that we use are also very fine. Yeah. And the slight difference the laser is to eradicate what we call organic disease, festering in the ear, and this is functional surgery to improve hearing. Uh, sometimes they go together and move the disease, the hearing goes up. So this is for severe to profound deafness at the bottom of the human skin. Okay, and and would they be able to hear? Uh, the same but the person. Uh, it varies from person to person. Uh, about 70% of adults can probably use a telephone. So that's quite good. So okay. we can discriminate sound on the telephone. Mm -hmm. it, it depends. You see, this bypasses the block in the inner ear, but we don't know what's happening further up into the brain. Right. So if someone's had meningitis, mm -hmm. they have uh, cerebral palsy, the central problems, then they may not benefit as much. But they almost always do better than with a hearing aid. Because yeah. they're already at the bottom end of the scale when they come to see us. Right. Okay. So it sort of assists anyway. Yes, it um, assists anyway. And as children, it also assists children to speak. And children okay. can go to mainstream school. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now it varies from child to child right. because we don't know many of these children have no congenital genetic deafness. Mm -hmm. And we don't know where the defects in the pathway are. Are they purely at the cochlea or the mm -hmm. or do they have? Simultaneous defects, but again, without this, the child is essentially deaf and dumb. Okay. When we talk about laser ear surgery, I think one of the other precautions that people would want to know first about is: is there a side effect to it? I mean, is there any kind? In, again, if you're talking about a little child, for instance, a child of five years old, yes. and the kid has got a little problem in the ear, and you do a surgery, yes. uh, is there something that? You know, he or she is not to speak to the laser, although with the laser you must be careful where you point at it. All uh, mastoid middle ear surgery, mm -hmm. the primary risk is the facial nerve. The nerve that supplies the muscles in the face so runs in the ear, mm -hmm. and uh, there's we usually quote a figure of uh, just under 1% risk of weakness of the face. Mm -hmm. This is for cochlear implant surgery in the dry ear, or for a patient with uh, mastoiditis, which is uh, pus coming out from the ear, mm -hmm. and the ear pushed forward. There's still a risk of about one percent. Uh, with the laser, you just have to be careful that you don't point it towards the facial But what about the um, preparation for the surgery and perhaps even the after kill of this? You know, these two surgery people are turning laser surgery to remove organic disease. We try and clean the ear up in the outpatient clinic. We we'll put them on antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Drops for mm -hmm. usually sometimes orally. And other than that, there's not a lot more. Where uh, you would admit the patient for intravenous antibiotics because it doesn't make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the aftercare, they usually stay in hospital for one night, maybe two nights. Uh, there are stitches sometimes to be removed for children who bury the stitches. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ear is packed, so you can't hear for about two weeks to three weeks for laser ear surgery. And then the packing is like sort of a tissue material comes out and you have a microscope in the clinic. And, uh, and then they have to keep the ear dry. It's very important that the water enters the ear. Right. That's, that's actually a, a, a truth for all ear problems. Any patient, anyone who has a painful or discharge of ear, mm -hmm. uh, the first piece of advice I always tell them is keep the ear dry and go swimming and no cotton buds. Right, no cotton buds. Actually, come, come to think of it, I needed to ask you this as well since you mentioned cotton buds. Ear candling seems to be very famous these days. Yes. Is that something that you would recommend or maybe not a good idea? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no objection to it right. in, in an ordinary person. Right. But I think a person who's got uh, uh, inflamed uh, ear canal skin, red, itchy, painful, discharging, or hole in the eardrum or perforation, I wouldn't recommend it because I don't know what the chemicals are involved. Right. 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 So it may irritate the skin or it may not allow any infection to come out. Mm -hmm. So I can't say yes or no. But, but, and you know what? Um, I've also um, seen people using. Um, you know, hair clips? Oh, yeah, yeah, hair clips. Yeah, hair clips to use them. Scary. Yeah. 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 What, what's your opinion? Please please don't cringe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the worry is that whatever tool you use, you could cut the skin. Or you may even press on a bit of hard wax, and the wax itself could cut the skin. 
and then you can end up with a painful discharging here. Yeah. So usually patients like that, number one, they tend to have an itchy ear, yeah. you tell them to keep water out, that helps. And the ways to do that, coffee, including the gasoline, petroleum jelly when you're showering. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they could see the GP or they could use olive oil. That's what I suggest. Olive oil, warm on a teaspoon, put it in for three nights in a row. And then, and then the cotton will sort of trickle out of the and then a warm shower and full day. And that's a gentle way to clean it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Olive oil. How interesting is that? There you go. You caught our attention on olive oil. <laughs> okay. Uh, this um, surgery, is it available nationwide? Or? Uh, yeah. Cochlear implants, because uh, the patients don't have a choice, and in children, there's a finite time before the brain will not recognize sound. Sure. So the child doesn't get the implant by uh, the, 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 the cutoff they use is four or five or six, but it, it's more than that. They can, they can get an implant 10, but okay. the really the earlier they get it, the better. The, the, the U.S. they do it around 12 months. Okay. And um, um, uh, that will... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, whether this uh, surgery is available. Yeah, so therefore the government moves cochlear implants for children okay. because the necessity is there, there's a timeline. So, uh, so government hospitals in Malaysia, the university hospitals in Malaysia do give it to the children, okay. but the adults unfortunately funding is an issue. So they are trying to improve it. Okay. okay. All right. Well, Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon yes. and, of course, bringing in all these gadgets. Absolutely fantastic to have you with us. Uh, for you, if you want to know more, of course, you can get in touch with the nearest uh, doctor, ENT, or anyone nearby you in the hospitals and to find out more about what's going on. Uh, meanwhile, of course, quick break are coming your way. We do have Nigel Scalchi going to be in the studios to tell us more about how he's going to make roast chicken with mustard sauce. Yeah. Talk to you in a bit. Don't go away.